Hi, uh, yes. Hi, my name is Lina and welcome to this episode where I will tell you everything that there is to know about warping. So warping in Ableton Live, all the functions of it, how you use it and all that jazz. So watch this episode. <laughs> Hi, 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 and welcome to LNA Dell's audio stuff, warping. First, I will go through all these kind of basic questions. What is it? Where is it? And then in the end, I will show you examples on how to use warping in your music. Welcome to this episode. Let's get into it. What is warping? What does it mean? Well, warping is an elastic way of using audio in a door, in a digital audio workstation like Ableton Live, which allows us stretch the sample without affecting the pitch, or we can affect the pitch without stretching the sample or compressing it. So it allows you to basically attach the audio into time and then allow that to mold and manipulate it the way that that's basically what it is. Areas to consider when we are learning about warping in Ableton Live. First thing, we need to get ourselves comfortable with the preference settings of warping. I will go through them, go through them in a minute. Second thing is the sample box area, which is the clip view. And the third area to consider is the actual clip editing view, which allows you to see the warp markers. I will show all this now. Okay, so, oh, need to close the window, I think. Okay, so the first thing is we're gonna be looking at the preferences. So when you go to the audio preferences, which is, by the way, the shortcut is command comma, you go to the section record, warp and launch. And from here, you need to go to this section called warp slash fades. This is the section, this, where's the camera here? <laughs> This is the section that will really help you define all your preference settings uh, for the session that you might be doing. So loop, warp, short samples. So the first one we have auto. Uh, auto means, so the live is guessing what are the settings that should be happening. I like having that there, except if I'm doing remix or something's very specific, then I could go to example warp loop that everything that I bring in is going to be warped and loop, looped. Or if I want something more experimental, I might want them all unwarped, just one shot. What, whatever you want, yeah? Auto warp long samples, it warps it, uh, it creates warp marker as well as transient markers. Default warp mode. We're gonna be talking about warp modes a little bit later. So they are also here in the clip view. These are different warp modes. What is the default one that we want to use? I'm gonna explain all of them a little bit later. And create fades on clip edges. It means that it has created a fade automatically to the clip edge. This might be also something that if you're doing a remix or mix, you might not want to do because if someone else is already sent or done all that, then you might not want to add not more fades to them. Hi, in this point, can I just ask you to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon just so that you will see so much more cool cool material content that I am creating. So yes, hit the bell icon and the subscription button. <laughs> okay, let's be get back to this video. Okay, the next thing we're gonna go and look is this area here. So we are in the clip view, we're in the sample section of the clip view, and we go to the warp section of the sample view. <laughs> First one is the toggle button for warp. Do we want it on or off? You can see what happens is that we straight away get a grid in this view when we click warp. <gasps> now there's a grid. So now we have attached this audio into time. We are now able to manipulate it. Under there, we can see segment BPM, which allows us to control the BPM of this area. So this can be different than the global PPM that we have on the top. 
under there, we have the double original tempo or half original tempo. So let's have a look what happens here. When I click that once, you can see that it doubled the original tempo here. So it's longer and then we can even double the doubled. Da, 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 da. Or we can make it shorter. We can have the original tempo like that, or we can have it even more. So that we can loop anything, we need to have the sample warped. So example, if I want to just play that's Nope, I need to warp it before I can loop it. That's my point. Okay, under there, we have the warp modes. Hi, oh my God. Uh, I'm just editing this video and I edit the explanation of the warp uh, modes into this video and it made it like two days long so it's just way too long I made a no whole another episode about the warp modes and explanation of them yeah I'm linking it here uh, here and down below so check that out <laughs> okay <laughs> Uh, there's another thing, put a clip in to arrange my view and you can see now that there's a, appeared another little toggle and it's called follower or leader. So that is excellent. When we warp a sample, we can select it to be the leader. So if you set it to, as a leader, it plays it like the warping would be off. So it plays it with the natural tempo that it was originally in. And when that is on the sets, so the global, you can see that that's turned gray now. So the global tempo is now matching to this clip's BPM. So this is very, very good when you're doing any type of remixing or anything that you need to kind of fi figure out what is the BPM of that sample. So the next thing, next thing, next thing. So let's talk about the sample display. So we already went the uh, clip mode and now we talk about this view here. So that is a warp marker here, this yellow thingy. So we have the warp markers and then we have the gray ones are called transient markers. Wherever I click here on the bar, I double click and I create a warp marker. And I, when I move it, I also move the sample you can see. When I double click it, I can remove them. Or when I create another one, I press down command and you can see that now there's three. There's warp markers that appeared. When I double click by pressing command down, I create three on the same time. And why that is useful is because then I can move the middle one, but nothing moves on, on the right side after this warp marker and nothing moves on the left side at, on the uh, other side of this warp marker. But I can just adjust the middle one and the middle segment. The sound wave shows the rhythm and that's what uh, the warp markers are detecting example we can see that maybe that area here is a kick and maybe that is a snare and that's what this is detecting so it's so when we put a beat like this it really detects it easy uh, straight away because it's very straightforward clip so you see on the left side here it created automatically a word marker in the beginning because that's it's detecting that that's where it starts. And on the right, uh, right side, you see that it's also detected that. Also, there's a couple important thing that now I need to show is that this is cropping the length of the sample. And this is where the play back is starting from. And that is important because when we right click or two finger click, you can see that uh, there's option set one, one, one here. So that means that I can select that this is where the playback should start from. And ta-da, what happened is that the white triangle, which selects where things start playing, is now here. Okay, again, without warping, this is not possible. So we can really select and customize where do we want things to start from. These options give us options uh, to select and figure out the length of the sample better. So let's say our sample is nine bars or like a random amount. So length 811, right? 
And then we can go to the last one. It says warp selection eight as eight bar loop because that's what it's detecting that is the most natural for the tempo. And uh, that's what live is kind of predicting, predicting that uh, the sample should be. So if I put like that, you can see what happened is that it made it back to eight bars. Okay, so these options really help us to detect uh, the tempo. So example, our session is 120. So if I move this to 93. Now warp 93 BPM from here. So now it's warping the sample to 93 BPM from that point because I clicked that. So these options help us to detect the, uh, and manipulate the sample so that they are matching the session they're matching the session, but other tracks better. Also, what we can do is quantize. So if I go to the quantize option, so I'm just gonna check the settings. Let's put 100%. If I go here and I put quantize, which is also a command U, you can see now that it's automatically curated warp markers and it's quantized the audio uh, with the protect, like assumption that these are the parts that should be on the grid. Okay, so let me just quickly show some examples how I would use the warping. So first, let's just put a well-cut music loop into this session. So just a regular sample. As we've seen before, it, that it created a word marker to the left work marker to the right. It also guesses the segment PPM. So if the segment PPM is now wrong, even though this is a very well cut sample, if this is wrong, I can just type in the sample BPM that I believe that it is if it got it wrong. If it got it right, but it got it example double longer, I can just use these two buttons. So example 240, even though it's 120, I can just use these buttons to make it correct. So in this case example, I would use this one and now it's correct. So let's say I have a sample like this, which is uncut and it's a bit odd looking like that. And I would need to now sync it to my session um, to make sure that it's it fits really well to the session. But I can just create warp markers where I think the beat ends and I can move it around like this. Example like that. And then I will just line the sample like that. So now I have the uncut, little bit odd sample in the area that I wish it to be. Another way of using more warp markers is manipulating the sample manually. So two reasons to do this is that I would like to example, manipulate the groove of the session, or I would like to use it as a sound design way of creating interesting man uh, characteristics to the song. I'm going to hold down command, so I'm going to create three different uh, warp markers same time. Double click and I can just move this drum example a little bit there. Maybe this one, I'm going to double click and move it there. And when I move this, you can see that the whole thing is moving to the right. So again, I just want to create a couple more so that I can just manipulate that area, but not the whole thing like that. <laughs> or you can make something super crazy like this. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Please subscribe. Please hit the bell icon. Please let me know down in the comments what you thought. And welcome back again. Like watch other things that I do. So see you here next time. Okay. What's that? I don't know. Bye.